Welcome to Underground Storage Tank Compliance. This is our series of Underground Storage Tank Compliance videos. This is Tanks 201. We're continuing from where we left off in Tanks 101. Uh, this is a quick recap of 101. We talked about underground storage tanks, EPA definition of underground storage tank, how USTs are installed, sizes of different USTs, and the materials that these USTs are made of. So now we're going to go into tanks 201 and in tanks 201 we're going to cover some more continuation from 101. We're going to talk about um, how tank designs are regulated, it's the major ma tank manufacturers in the United States, how these tanks are made, and warranties for these tanks. And then we're going to briefly cover installing a tank. So these tank designs are regulated. Um, the EPA has a long list of regulations that apply to the different tanks out there. Steel Tank is too is pretty much the regulating authority for the way steel tanks are designed. Um, they put out different publications. Their uh, Steel Tank Institute um, R922 is specifications for firm tank, and then they have a few other different uh, guidances out there. Difficulties with these different guidances from these different organizations is they're very difficult to get for free. If you want to read these guidances, you usually have to pay for them. They can run anywhere from $25 to $500. So they can be quite expensive. Normally, all you need to know is if it's a UL tank that's regulated under here. So if it's a UL 58 or a UL 971, UL 1316, these are the underwriters laboratories designation for these tanks and that means they meet these standards. Uh, you can find out a lot of these tank information on the tank websites. So the major tank manufacturers in the United States, there's basically one organization that oversees all steel tanks and that's the Steel Tank Institute. Now, there are multiple manufacturers of these steel tanks using the guidelines from the Steel Tank Institute. For instance, Modern Welding. Modern Welding is one that's regionally located close to the middle of the United States. It's They make a red tank, and they're pretty good tanks. They're all over the place. They have the glass steel, the glass steel two. The, there's different trade names for a bunch of them, but they're usually steel tanks with some kind of either coating or a tank built around a tank. Um, Watco is another manufacturer. They're usually blue tanks, and there's more tanks out there. Um, usually steel tanks are made by taking one sheet of steel material and then bending it in pretty much a spiral. They take this spiral and they start off with it, and then it just becomes a spiral so that once it's finished, there's two walls to the tank and then they weld it together and then they put the end caps on each end and they weld those on and those are supposedly double walled also so steel tanks are pretty well made um, you can have basically a single wall steel tank with another tank built around it which would be fiberglass or um, some kind of coating but for the most part that's how steel tanks are made Here's some different types of steel tanks that are out there. There's a wide variety. There's ACT 100s, there's STIP3s, there's the different uh, glass steels, plast steels. Basically, these are steel tanks with a jacketed or a clad outer coat on them. And these can be polyethylene materials or uh, FRP or fiberglass reinforced plastic materials. Uh, those keep the steel tanks from corroding. So that when you're putting a steel tank in the ground, you have to be quite careful putting them in so you don't scratch those coatings. Because if you scratch it, it'll create what's called a holiday or an area that the tank can really focus and uh, rust out on. So main, the contractors have to be very careful when they're installing them. And here's how the tanks look. There's a interior steel tank, then there's the exterior resin coating. And they have a fibrous material between the two walls so that liquids can move in that area if they need them to. So there's different ways that they make these. Here's a picture of a modern welding 
uh, steel tank and you can see this well that did not work at all there it is okay now it's working I couldn't get the picture to work which is always telling my life so this just shows you a cutaway of what the different tanks look like the steel primary inner tank the annular space or it's also called the interstitial space on most tanks uh, you'll see that referred to as interstitial monitoring on different tanks um, so when they call it annular space interstitial space those are inter uh, those are exchangeable interchangeable here's how they clad a steel tank with fiberglass resins they put the tank on a, a mandrel or a turning point and they spray the fiberglass onto the tank so that it's all coated in fiberglass resins so that the tank won't rust when it's in the ground and it provides a, a protection for the tank steel tank there's two major fiberglass tank manufacturers in the united states the first one is usually called xerces um, these are xerces is a company inside the zcl which has been recently bought by shaw Corps. so uh, you can find information on these tanks on the xerces website the shaw Corps website the zcl website and the other tank is containment solutions which those tanks were previously called owens corning tanks uh, xerces tanks are usually a reddish color or a maroon color and the containment solutions or uh, the containment solution tanks are usually a milky white uh, kind of an off-white these two tanks they both manufacturers use a different method of making their tanks the Xerces tanks are made from the outside in. Basically, there's someone standing inside the tank and the tank spins around them and they spray the fiberglass resins on the inside of a mold. My CSI tanks are made just the opposite. The fiberglass is sprayed from the outside of the mold and the tanks are formed around a mold. Owens Corning sold the assets of uh, their tank division in 1994. So you'll still find tanks that are say Owens Corning on them, but they're basically containment solutions tanks in the ground. One of the things to pay attention when you're putting a new tank in the ground is these end caps. They will usually have a lot of information on the tank. So capturing pictures of these end caps before you put a tank in the ground can give you a lot of information that you can use later on in the life of, of your tanks. So you want to make sure you have that information um, this is a video from Modern Marvels, and it shows how all the capacity at containment solutions in Bakersfield, Our California. Tank solution. manufacturing tank fabricators solution. construct these 30,000 gallon double wall truck stop tanks one piece at a time. What we see going on behind me is the rotation of our steel man, which is the basis see that they're being sprayed of tank the forming. Resin, glass fibers, put glass fibers on. and treated silica to build a composite laminate that is formed on this mold in uh, multiple passes. Next, fabricators add plastic reinforcing ribs to the mold. Those are the ribs. Wrapped with the same fiberglass, fiberglass materials, these ribs give the tank all the strength it needs for its long life underground. After the tank sections are cured, workers pull them from the mold, seal them together, and pressure test them to ensure that they won't leak fuel. Any leak could prove environmental. And the interesting thing about these tanks is when they're in the ground, a lot of times if you have no idea what kind of tank is in the ground, when you're looking in from the, the sumps on the tops of them, if you see those ribs you automatically know it's a fiberglass tank the steel tanks don't have those ribs they're just smooth so that's just if you're at a site and you have questions about what kind of tank is in the ground because sometimes the site doesn't have paperwork or other things then you can look through the top and you can see those ribs and know immediately this is at source university and this is a containment solutions tank that they have on site there you can see it's a white tank they've cut out the sides of it and you can look down those sides of the opening you can see that it's a double wall tank you can see that there's a space between the two walls and that's called the interstitial space where they monitor these tanks and there's a lot of little things inside the tank you can see the fill pipes the uh, stp pump 
some the stp is what sucks the fuel out of these tanks and then pushes it to the dispensers and then you'll see the probes in the tanks and the probes have two floats on them usually one towards the bottom to measure for any water that gets into the fuel and the other for towards the top it tells you how much product or fuel is actually in that tank and then you'll see those off color squares at the bottom those are striker plates so if anything is dropped down the tank it hits those plates and doesn't uh, shatter or, or poke a hole in the tank sometimes just people will put a stick down the fill pipe to measure the product levels in the tank so those will keep those sticks from going through the tank into the soil Xerxes, they again have the information on the end cap of the tank so you can see how much fuel this tank is supposed to hold you get the model number off it you get the manufacturer uh, you get that it's a double wall tank so capturing a photo of these end caps is always really good for your records this is a video of them making a tank at one of the Xerxes manufacturers and you can see that these are green tanks which they have up in Canada and there's someone standing inside the tank spraying fiberglass resins inside the mold and they're putting these things together smoothing it out and then they'll join this tank and, and the other end together to make one solid tank an interesting thing about some of these is when they make a compartmented tank the compartments are curved they're not what you would think of as a flat bulkhead dividing the two tanks it's just basically the end of that one tank you saw being made there placed into the uh, other tank so that it's a rounded end so you have to have exact measurements whenever you're determining the capacity of these tanks this is the Xerxes tank at the Source University you can see a lot of the similar things that you saw in the containment solutions tank it has the STP sump pump in there it has a uh, probe in there it shows you the depth of the fuel or if there's any water in there it has a drop tube with the flapper valve so that it can keep the tanks from overfilling and you can see there's straps across these tanks the straps are fastened to concrete dead men that will hold the tanks down add weight to the tank and add um, some leverage to keep the tanks in the ground in case there's ever a high water event or there's a reason the tanks might pop out of the ground and you can see when I get over towards the edges of the that there's a line between the two tanks you can actually see the interstitial space between tank one and tank two and you can see that there's room for uh, interstitial fluids to flow around and those are the sumps on top and spill buckets and other things these tanks have warranties when you get a new tank it has a warranty the fiberglass tanks come with 30-year warranties um, the steel tanks can vary uh, the STI standard is a 10-year limited warranty you can get an extended 30-year limited warranty but if you ever have problems with your tanks say there's a hole appears in your tank for some odd reason or there's some kind of fluid escaping or entering your um, tank then you need to go back to the manufacturer and see if they will honor that 30-year warranty because if your tank is within that window you may be able to get them to come out and do the repairs for you for free tank installations are regulated in the EPA regulations API the American Petroleum Institute has a recommended practice 1615 you have to pay for this to get this RP Petroleum Equipment Institute has RP 100 which is also another the mirrors pretty much the same instructions as the API National Fire Prevention Association they have a few rules that apply to underground storage tank installations you can read the National Fire Prevention Association regulations for free on their website if you go there and just log in you will have access to it you can't you're not supposed to be able to print it or um, copy it but you can read them and then apply those regulations and then each tank manufacturer has their instructions for installing their tanks and those instructions are normally in compliance with the recommended practices that are out there from these other organizations Xerxes has some videos out there on how to install their tanks CSI has manuals and, and instructions on installing their tanks and steel tank institute on the steel tank institute webpage there are instructions for each of their tanks and how to install them uh, I think you may have to pay for the steel tank ones I don't remember off 
you can look it up and find out. So installing a tank, basically you dig a hole in the ground. You make sure it's the right depth. Uh, there are some instances where when you dig a hole, it will fill up with water as quickly as you remove soil. So there are places in Florida and places like that that have high groundwater where an installer has to wear life jackets and you have to fill the tank with something, water or fuel, to get the tank to sink to the bottom of the sump so that it will stay there during installations. And you want to make sure that you're doing these things, installing the tanks the way the instructions read to do it. And then put a backfill material in there, uh, either sand or pea gravel, something that won't poke holes in the tanks, so that when the tanks are in the ground, they have the soft beds to be surrounded by. Plus, they're porous, so any kind of fluids that get in there can move into the tank pit, and you can it'll stay in the tank pit instead of going into the surrounding environment. So, for more on USD compliance, you can join our LinkedIn site. You can submit, subscribe to these videos. You can like these videos. This is an example of a tank that was not anchored down, that was allowed to get empty and in a high water environment, and the tank actually popped out of the ground. And unfortunately, this happens much more than is ever told to people. But you get a good view of what a containment solutions tank looks like coming out of the ground. Like I said, if you have any questions or need any issues or you want to know more about tanks or you want to... Ask me questions, just let me know. I'm happy to help anytime. Thank you.